I'm pleased uh, to introduce uh, Dr. Sujit Basu. Uh, he has the education in uh, PhD, uh, NRS Medical College in Calcutta University in India. His clinical training is internal medicine and medical oncology, NRS Medical College, National Cancer Institute of India, Beth Israel, and Econet Medical Center and Harvard Medical School for this is training National Cancer Institute of India, Beth Israel and Deaconess Medical Center and Harvard Medical School, Boston. Appointment, Medical Oncologist, Oncologist, National Cancer Institute of India, 92-96. Acting Chief of Medical Oncology, National Cancer Institute, Associate Consultant, Mayo Clinic of Rochester, Minnesota, USA. USA. Um, from 2004-2008, to, uh, uh, adjunct faculty Mayo Clinical Clinic Rochester, Minnesota, USA. Present is his um, uh, position. Also, professor Comprehensive Cancer Center and Department of Pathology, Ohio State University, USA. Uh, from from uh, 2008 to present uh, is a. Uh, in interesting research is neurotransmitters and mediated regulation of, of tumor growth. His uh, uh, lecture this morning is uh, uh, entitled Neurotransmitter as Regulators of Tumor Angiogenesis and Immunity, the Role of Catecholamine. Please. Um, thank you, Giorgio, for your kind words. And I first I thank Dr. Cosentino and other members of the of his group and uh, for his great hospitality and for um, inviting me to this wonderful city. So um, before uh, starting this, I just want to tell you that you have been hearing about the neurotransmitters, catecholamines every day from, from the first day of this session, that stress, catecholamines, cancer, autoimmune disorders. But today I'm going to tell you something totally different. Uh, we started this, we thought that there is a, a catecholamine system in the periphery. Periphery is also very important, uh, and they also play a very important role in cancer. Uh, so today my topic of discussion is neurotransmitters as regulators of tumor angiogenesis and immunity, the role of catecholamines. Actually, our focus is mainly dopamine. Uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, were, uh, is not really our focus, but uh, I will tell you what people are doing in this field, and so let's start. So, um, so before um, going uh, into this, uh, before going. Uh, into the topic, I just want to give you a brief background. What is tumor angiogenesis? Tumor angiogenesis is a process by which tumors form uh, form which they form new blood vessels, not the old blood vessels. They form new blood vessels. So why why is the so why tumor form blood vessels? Because the tumor cells are metabolically active and they like normal cells they are much more metabolically active and they and therefore they need more food and more oxygen so and they and they're very cunning they form they secrete some factors and they try to make their own blood vessels so the concept was to if we can choke this tumor cells by depriving of this blood supply we can kill this tumor cells this was a concept it was given a long time back, but it came to the forefront uh, by wonderful work of Judah Faulkman from Harvard Medical School, and he was the he popularized this notion. So, uh, before, uh, so the process of angiogenesis and the tumor can form blood vessels by four main ways. First is sprouting. What is sprouting? Tumors liberate growth factors which help the endothelial cells from the existing blood vessels to migrate, then they proliferate and they form blood vessels. 
This is the one way, it's called sprouting. Then the other way is the bone marrow progenitor cells recruitment from the bone marrow. These are the endothelial progenitor cells. What they do, similarly, the tumor cells elaborate the cytokines like VEGF, SDF, basic FGF, IL-6, and by chemokinesis, the cells migrate into the tumor uh, environment, microenvironment, and they form blood vessels. And the other two are this intersusception and coaction. Intersusception, what happens? It, uh, a, a wall forms between the capillary and it splits into two blood vessels. And the other is co-option. Sometimes the tumors can grow, a vascular tumor can grow into a, a, an organ, for example, lung and brain, which is highly vascular organs. They don't need uh, their own blood vessels, but they, what they do, they take the blood supply from that organ and they grow. But the major two methods by which angiogenesis tumor blood vessels are formed are the sprouting and bone marrow cell recruitment. So now, uh, and, and this process of this angiogenesis, this blood vessel formation is tightly regulated in the body. These are the pro-angiogenic factors. For example, the main factor is the vascular endothelial growth factor. It's the major cytokine liberated by the tumors, which uh, can form blood vessels. The other factors are this BCKFGF, PIGF, PDGF, but today we'll be focusing on this PEGF. And the, these are the anti factors. These are also liberated in the body. And so what happens when the, when you will see in the next slide, when there's a tilt in the, you know, when there's a more angi pro angiogenic factors like VGF is secreted, the balance is tilted towards angiogenesis. So here is, you can see what happens. This is an avascular tumor. Tumors liberate VEGF, NG2, IL-8, FGF, and this is the blood vessel. From there, you know, the endothelial cells are migrating, and then they vascularize this tumor. And this is called angiogenesis. Uh, so as I said that we will be following VEGF today because our focus is VEGF and because it is the most important cytokine uh, liberated by the tumors to form new blood vessels. So VEGF has four receptors, VEGF R1, 2, 3, and neuropilin 1. The, the most important receptor through which VEGF functions is the VEGF R2. So now you must be thinking of why how I came to this angiogenesis and why catecholamines and tumor angiogenesis. Like you all, I was also a medical student once upon a time. I used to go to the National Cancer Institute of India uh, as a medical student, and I was assigned to a group who were working on catecholamine stress and cancer. They thought that, you know, <coughs> let's just, I will be, they told me that you do some work, but not in the main project. They thought that I will ruin their project. And so they told me to, uh, you know, gave me the li liberty to do something. So I just finished, had finished my rotation in the intensive care unit. So there we had used a lot of dopamine. So my, I thought that let's see what happens. Uh, what is the status of dopamine with this tumor? So what I did, we had those, a um, lot of those murine acytic fluid, uh, murine acytic fluid uh, bearing tumors models in my mouse. So when I used to inject those mouse with those tumors, we, got, we used to get a lot of acidic fluid, but when I used to inject dopamine into that, uh, those mice, the acidic fluid used to go down. So going back to my pathology class, there were a lot of discussions were going on that VGF can decrease the acidic fluid by decreasing the permeability. So I thought that uh, the dopamine is perhaps, perhaps working through VGF. But I didn't have any model to prove there in at the National Cancer Institute of India. So what I did, I contacted Dr. Harold Dobrak from Harvard Medical School and said, Hal, this is my theory, and I think this is working. He said, well, you come to Harvard. And he invited me to Harvard. And so, uh, so and this is the way, you know, we started doing this work. So there's a, you know, you have to have faith in yourself, and you have to say that, you know, when your boss says that, uh, when I told this to my boss in India, they said, oh, it may happen, may not happen. You, they didn't care, you know, really. So uh, I thought that, in, uh, but, you know, 
A person who knows the subject, like Harold Dobrak, he discovered BJF. He was excited and he invited me. And then I went there and, um, and this is the way we started uh, doing this work. So let's, uh, last, yesterday Marco had elegantly described what is what are the catecholamines, means, this dopamine, norepinephrine and epinephrine. And I don't want to go into the details because you all are totally swamped with this knowledge now that you all know what it is. So I'm skipping this slide. So let's focus on dopamine. Dopamine acts through, mainly through these two classes of receptors, D1 and D2. The D1 class includes D1 and D5 subtypes, which are activation classically increase intracellular cyclic AMP. The D2 class of receptors, which includes D2, D3, D4 subtypes, and which inhibits intracellular cyclic AMP. And so, uh, Again, what we did was that before uh, I'm going to tell you about this, I just want to tell you what we did. When we were injecting dopamine and the SIT3 was going down, uh, it showed that it was through dopamine, but dopamine has several receptors. So what I did, I used agonists, and I found that the D2 receptor agonists were, were doing this trick. They were, the dopamine was acting through D2 receptors and was inhibiting uh, the cytic fluid and the tumor growth. So this is the this is the very elegant, a very stringent model uh, of uh, angiogenesis. What we did, we injected adenovirgin vector in which we had VEGF 164 is the most prominent, uh, it's most important uh, the, the type of the VEGF 164 which is liberated by the tumor. It, it was controlled by the cytomegalovirus. We injected into the ear of nude mice. And when we injected uh, dopamine, we saw, for example, if you see when there's angiogenesis red, you see these are the blood vessels. And we, just, we coined this term for the first time that this is called the mother vessels. What happens when you inject radia? It increases the permeability, free brain comes out, because if you have, if you have seen uh, how they make buildings, but they have to make the base, then they, the buildings are built. Like similarly, like angiogenesis, what happens? First, there is an increase in the permeability. Fibrin comes out, it forms the base, the endothelial cells migrate, and then they form the, you know, the tumor blood vessels. This angiogenic blood vessels are pericyte poor, they have lack of pericytes, they are different from the normal endothelial cells, and they are, they have a very thin blood vessels. So now what, what you see here is the edema. And now when we injected dopamine, we saw the angiogenesis was significantly decreased. The blood vessels, uh, this is a confocal microscopy. We found that the blood vessels, that the mother vessels were gone. Edema was much less. So it showed that BGF, uh, that dopamine could inhibit bgf induced angiogenesis because this is a stringent model of bgf induced angiogenesis. So now we have to show show whether this was, uh, whether dopamine receptors are present in this, this endothelial cells. So here is the, what we did. This is a nerve. This is the control, positive control, because you can see that it expressed D2 receptor. These are D2 receptor in immunohistochemistry. So you see the mother vessels are lined by D2 receptors, endothelial cells. So it showed that this had the D2 receptors in the endothelial cells and dopamine was inhibiting vgf induced angiogenesis by acting through D2 receptors. But we have to, we have to confirm it. So what we did next, we used a knockout system. D2 receptor knockout mice. This mice are available in C57 VL6 background. And here only two types of tumor growth, B16 melanoma and Lewis lung carcinoma. So we use the B16 melanoma and you see, this is the control. Control. Um, uh, this is the normal mice, wild type. That is not D2 is not knocked out here. You see, there is a you know increase in permeability. What we did, we injected carbon, colloidal carbon, to see the permeability. So, and you know, tumor liberates VGF. So what happens? You see, there is a little bit of you know, um, there, there there is a you know this is the carbon. So there was extravasation of carbon. So there there was an increase in permeability. And these are the microvessel density. 
So these are these are the ways by which you know where there is angiogenesis or not. If the microcell density is more, angiogenesis is more, and when it is less, it is less. So we uh, stain this by CD31. These are the markers. So here is the DT knock on noise. See what happens. It's the totally this this thing. You know, there's a lot of permeability. The carbon, you can see the carbon. Totally, it's really it's significantly increased permeability than this wild type. And you see the angiogenesis is also more, more microvessel density. So it showed that now it's, it was proved that dopamine inhibited VGF induced angiogenesis by acting through D2 receptors because here the mice didn't have D2 receptors. So the permeability was more and the microvessel density was more. Now, um, a group from Netherlands, Kobe Hygien, they, uh, they look into our this papers and they were excited. And they, were, they thought that they, they had a very good model of rats, hyperdopaminergic rats. They transplanted this mice, uh, this rats with tumors, and they also found that reduced tumor growth, experimental metastasis formation, and angiogenesis is rats with a hyperactive dopaminergic system. So our work, which we published in Nature Medicine and Cancer Research was corroborated by Huygens Group from Netherlands. And again, I'm showing you, uh, we did some other work in other tumors so that it was to see what happens in other tumors. These are human tumors. Um, and this is, a, first of all, this is a rat tumor. We, we induce gastric cancer in this rat by this uh, MNNG, this is a carcinogen. You can feed those rats and they develop gastric cancer after a while. We saw that there was a lot of angiogenesis, this is a microvessel density, and then when we treated them with uh, dopamine, the microvessel density was going down. You can see the number of microvessels was less. And this is a control, um, negative control, so that our staining was okay, we could get it from here. Similarly, we used another uh, human tumor, HS7460. It's a gastric cancer. It's a human gastric cancer cell line. We transplanted into the nude mite, and we found similar results. And then what we did, we, we then thought that, okay, it was in gastric cancer. So whether it happens in other cancers, we used uh, MCF7. It's a breast cancer cell line. We injected into the waste and we saw similar results when we uh, if treated them with dopamine. The microvessel density was gone, the tumor growth was significantly went down, and uh, the lifespan of the mice was significantly increased. Similarly, this is a gastric cancer. It, it's a colon cancer, HT29. And we injected this colon cancer into the colon of the mice, orthotopically, and we found similar results. So this showed that dopamine could inhibit angiogenesis and tumor growth and could increase the lifespan of the animals. So what about the mechanism? So without mechanism, it has no value. So what we found that, uh, these are the two endothelial cells. We have a very good technique. Our uh, group is, ex the people in our group are expert in isolating two endothelial cells from tumors of animals and human tumors also. So what we found that, um, that Dopamine could inhibit VGF R2 phosphorylation. You see, this is a uh, tumor endothelial cell of MCF7, and when we uh, and this tumor endothelial cells were isolated from uh, tumor-bearing animals, both untreated and treated. In untreated mice, you can see that there's a lot of phosphorylation because VGF acts through phosphorylating VGF R2 receptor. And now, when we injected those mice with dopamine, we saw that the VGF R2 phosphorylation went down, and so. This was one of the mechanisms, and then for migration and permeability, FAC is very important, focal addition kinase. We saw that dopamine could also inhibit FAC. Similarly, for migration, MAP kinase is very important. We saw that it could inhibit VGF-mediated VGF -mediated MAP kinase inhibition. Same thing we happened, this, is, this was in MCF7, this was in HT29. So what happens is, you know, now, this is a cartoon where I've summarized what is going on. So, on activation of D2 receptor, it inhibits MAP kinase, 
and phosphorylation. If you see it's very clear, when a VGF acts with VGF R2, VGF R2 receptor, it acts on here, it causes phosphorylation, it causes MAP kinase phosphorylation, fat phosphorylation, endothelial cell migration, endothelial cell proliferation. What dopamine is doing, dopamine is inhibiting this pathway. And in this way, it is inhibiting VGF induced angiogenesis. Now, um, as I told you before, there's another very important component of angiogenesis are bone marrow derived endothelial cells, EPC, endothelial progenitor cells. So we wanted to see whether dopamine could uh, inhibit uh, <coughs> so doing something on the EPCs because EPCs also contribute in making tumor, tumor blood vessels. So this is a very interesting experiment. We, uh, actually, what happened, we were reading Giorgio's paper and we found that dopamine is, is in the uh, bone marrow. So we got inter we were trying to get one reference, and his paper helped us in getting one reference, you know. So we, uh, and then what we found is that uh, here is a normal, uh, when we transplanted this animals with S180, these are sarcoma 180 tumors, we found that as the tumor grew, in the animals, the bone marrow concentration, dopamine concentration in the bone marrow went down. This was a very interesting finding. It's, it, with the tumor, uh, the bone marrow dopamine goes down, and the endothelial progenitor cells come out of the bone marrow into the circulation. And without coming into the circulation, it cannot go to the tumor endothelial, tumor uh, vascular bed. So it has to come out from the bone marrow. So you see, it's very interesting that Tumor is, when we transplanted these animals with this tumor, the bone marrow dopamine is going down, endothelial progenitor cell is coming out of the bone marrow. And we did a fax, we used a CD45 minus, VGF R2 positive and CD31 positive cells. So next, what we did is that we had to check whether there were D2 receptors in these EPCs or not, endothelial progenitor cells. We did a fax. And we found that 98% of this, um, this um, uh, endothelial progenitor cells had D2 receptors in them. And then what happened, then we found that when we injected these animals with um, dopamine, we found that, for example, see, we, we, then we wanted to see if it was inhibiting that VGF induced migration of the cells or not. So we injected these animals with VGF, and then we injected them with dopamine. We found that, for example, see here, when, when you inject VGF to the normal animals, a lot of bone marrow, bone marrow derived endothelial progenitors come into the peripheral circulation. And then when you inject this mice with dopamine, treat this mice with dopamine, it goes down. And again, to show that it was D2 mediated, we used a specific D2 antagonist, eticlopride. So it prevented the action of dopamine, so it was like before. So it showed that the action of dopamine was through D2 receptors, and dopamine could inhibit VGF-induced migration of the bone marrow cells by acting through D2 receptors. Uh, this is the bone marrow transplantation model, but finally we have to show that the incorporation of the cells into the bone marrow was less, in the, uh, the vascular bed was less. This was an elegant bone marrow transplantation model. We found that in normally there were incorporation of this EPCs, endothelial progenitor cells into the tumor vascular bed. There were much more, and when we injected them with dopamine, it went down. And so um, we published this paper in 2008 in Journal of Clinical Investigation, and uh, they, the journal editors liked it a lot, and there was a commentary on this paper also. So what is the mechanism right now? So it, okay, it inhibits VGF-induced migration of the cells from the bone marrow. So we have to have mechanism. Otherwise, without mechanism, people won't believe it. So what we did, we found that uh, it inhibited R1, R2 phosphorylation, dopamine, and by doing that, it inhibited MMP9 expression in the bone marrow. What happens? MMP9 helps in the migration of the cells. So you see, in the normal, it's, there's a little bit of MMP9. 
And when there is a tumor, MMP9 goes up. Expression. What happens in MMP9, when MMP9 goes up, it, the cells try to migrate from the bone marrow into the circulation and from the circulation into the tumor vascular bed and forms the angiogenic vessels. So when we treated with them with dopamine, we found that this MMP9 expression was much less. And here we used to show that, that it was through D2, we used D2 knockout mice. And again we see when there's a D2 knockout mice, when they were transplanted with this tumor, the MMP9 expression was very high. So it showed that D2 is doing something. And then uh, whether to see that it's really through D2, we injected this mice with dopamine because since they had no D2 receptors, so the dopamine could not do anything. And so again, we, I said that, what, how does it dopamine does it? It inhibits phosphorylation of R1 and R2, and then by doing that, it lowers the expression of MMP9. And this is the mechanism by which dopamine acts. So this is a cartoon again. VHF, it acts on the bone marrow. It causes R1, R2 phosphorylation. It increases the MMP9 synthesis and then it causes APC mobilization. What happens when you activate dopamine duty receptors? It inhibits R1, R2 phosphorylation, therefore MMP9 synthesis is decreased and it inhibits APC mobilization. So you now you must be thinking that, well, this guy is talking too much. He's saying too much big things that dopamine is doing great things. What is the proof? Because dopamine is available in the clinic for many years. Why, uh, why this has not gone to the clinic? It's a good question. You know, I also had this question. So, and we are pleased to say that based on our preclinical work, a lot of clinical trials have been undertaken, especially in hyper ovarian stimulation syndrome. It's a syndrome which is seen in case of reproductive, and, uh, reproductive uh, endocrinology, reproductive. You know, you have heard about test tube babies. Yeah, it, it's it, when you give a lot of hormones to women, this syndrome occurs. It's a very fatal syndrome. Patient dies. So, based on our work, uh, Antonio Pelliser, who is the editor in chief of Sterility and Fertility, he's from Spain, and his group, and all of us and the rest of the world, they started do, taking uh, doing clinical trials because this was uh, because the pathogenesis of this syndrome was due to increased VEGF secretion. What they thought that well. Bromocriptin is there. Bromocriptin is a dopamine agonist, C2 agonist. Cabarabaline is there, so why not try this? And they tried it and it worked like a miracle. And it's now a standard treatment for ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and also an endometriosis. Endometriosis also is due to VGF, excessive VGF secretion and angiogenesis. And they found and, uh, that dopamine D2 agonist can inhibit VGF function and can prevent OH ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and endometriosis. And so he wrote us a letter that he was glad that we did this work and it helped him in finding cure and prevention for these two diseases because endometriosis occurs in about 8% of women. So you can understand the importance of this disease. And we were also glad that our work was translated, finally translated from the bench to the clinics. Now, uh, we have, we have, presently we have done some interesting work which has been accepted for publication in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, USA PNS. So it will come this month, either late this month or early next month. This is a very interesting thing. So you see, these are the prostate tumors, human prostate tumors and colon tumors. And this is, if you see this, this is a, you know, a blood vessel in normal prostate and uh, colon. You see, it's a very, a well-architectured blood vessels in normal blood vessels. What happens when there is a tumor? Uh, you see, it, the structure goes disarray. You know, there is a totally loss of structure, and there is a this, these are called tumor blood vessels. So there is a difference between tumor blood vessels and normal blood vessels. So what happened when we injected them with dopamine? We found that you know there was, you know, uh, the structure was. Again, it became like normal. So it's a theory, it's a Rakesh Jain's theory from Harvard Medical School. He said that normalization of tumor blood vessels. This is also very important. Unless the tumors are not normalized, the chemotherapy cannot work. 
Radiation cannot work because there is hypoxia and it prevents the chemotherapeutic agents to work properly. So you see, it, it's, what it is doing is it's normalizing, normalization of the blood vessels when we treat them with dopamine. But when we give, give them a D2 agonist, D2 antagonist before dopamine, the dopamine couldn't function. So it showed that it was through <coughs> D2 mediated function. Similarly, if you see this, this is a structure and this is the permeability. You see, when there is a tumor, a lot of this is a fixed dextrin, all the fixed dextrin comes out and you see it's a, you know, an increase in permeability in tumor blood vessels. When you inject with dopamine, it, it, it more or less it becomes normal. Similarly, when you pre-treat this animals with et at D2 antagonist, dopamine cannot function. Therefore, it showed that it is true D2 mediated. Uh, so, if you tell someone that it has normalized, nobody is going to believe. So you have to do some functional assays. So what we did is we used uh, laser Doppler to measure the blood flow in these animals and to check the hypoxia in the tumor tissues. You see, when there is a there is a tumor, the blood vessels, in the tumor microenvironment is totally hypoxic. This is the hypoxic, uh, hypoxia. We use PMZ to use this. Uh, this is a. Um, this is a. You can use inject this, and you can uh, use the confocal microscopy to check the hypoxia in uh, blood vessels uh, on the micro environment. So when you give dopamine, it went down. So it showed that it could really the structure and, and the morphology which we I showed you before. It's really dopamine is doing something because hypoxia is going down. And similarly, when you see the um, this blood flow, the blood flow was really normal after dopamine. So it showed that dopamine could normalize blood vessels by uh, by reduce and it reduces hypoxia and it reduces the blood flow and it normalizes the blood flow. And so it's it's causing you know it's helping to normalize the tumor blood vessels. So if you we we are not showing it, but when we gave dopamine and anti-cancer drugs together, it works better than an individual anti-cancer drug. And this, you will find it in the, when the paper comes out. And it's, it has, it's, the mechanism here is totally beyond VGF. It's not through VGF. Uh, because um, it's through other cytokines, very important cytokines. I'm not, um, um, because it, it will be a press release, so it's better to read the paper when it comes out. And what happens, you know, if you see, these are the pericytes. So these are the pericytes. These, these are the marker of RGS5 and PDGFR beta are the markers of immature pericytes. So first we wanted to check what happens. This, these are the receptors, dopamine receptors are present in pericytes. You see, these are the co-localization experiments. Like on focal microscopy, is a, we found that it was, a, that there is a D2 receptors present in both PC3, PC3 is a prostate cancer tumor and HT29 is a colon tumor. So pericytes have dopamine D2 receptors. I think we were the first to say this. Uh, uh, and, and you see there, these are the RGS5 is a marker of immature pericytes and PC31 is the endothelial cells. We are co-localizing it. We are finding that there are uh, immature pericytes around the tumor vascular bed. Because as I told you before, the tumor blood vessels are pericyte poor. So similarly, these are the PDGF, these are two pericytes are in the tumor bed near the blood vessels. So what happens when you inject them with dopamine, it, it, it is a beautiful co-localization of this uh, pericytes. These pericytes come migrate and integrate into the blood vessels and make them a stabilized blood vessel. And so the pericyte poor immature tumor blood vessels are becoming normalized. And we use two markers of pericytes, NG2, these are markers of mature pericytes and alpha SME. And these are CD31 is the green, CD31 is the blood vessels. So you see, first this, then you see that there is a, there is a co-localization, you see. There's yellow, red, and green makes yellow, and so these are the co-localized, so integrated into the blood vessels. Similarly, here also the same thing is happening. Alpha SMA uh, is integrating into the CD31. So uh, dopamine could 
uh, normalize the blood vessels by incorporating pericytes into this tumor blood vessels. Uh, now, uh, this was our work. This, this is a work done by others. We didn't do this work, but uh, these are the other catecholamines, how they, uh, what are their roles in angiogenesis. So, norepinephrine and epinephrine are other two catecholamines, very important catecholamines, which, are, which act on their respective target cells through alpha and beta adrenal receptors. Alpha adrenal receptors act by increasing the intracellular calcium level. Alpha 2 adrenal receptors inhibit intracellular cyclic AMP by inhibiting adenine cyclase. And beta 1 and beta 2 adrenal receptors increase intracellular cyclic AMP by activating adenine cyclase. Uh, so interestingly, we found in this, uh, there are reports that norepinephrine stimulates angiogenesis. In contrast to uh, dopamine, norepinephrine, dopamine inhibits angiogenesis, but the other two catecholamines increase angiogenesis. Norepinephrine stimulates angiogenesis in human malignant ovarian pharyngeal tumors and multiple myeloma by acting through beta and beta 2 adrenal receptors. It increases VHF secretion and overexpression of MMP2 and MMP9. And the underlying signaling pathway was that what happens? V receptor it stimulates cyclic AMP, stimulate, activates PK, and there's VHF secretion. And by through this pathway, it increases angiogenesis in tumors. All the IL-6 is also involved in any and epinephrine-mediated ovarian cancer angiogenesis. What happens? Any action beta receptor, SARC kinase goes up, and SARC stimulates IL-6 secretion. IL-6 is a pro-angiogenic molecule. So now you can see that there's a cartoon we did. So our theory was that the catecholamines, the three catecholamines act in a different way. Dopamine inhibits downregulates angiogenesis, and norepinephrine, epinephrine upregulate angiogenesis. So there's an angiogenic switch. Catecholamines act like an angiogenic switch in the body. So, uh, and uh, now let's, um, any question? And now we will be shifting our focus to another topic, uh, tumor immunity and catecholamines. Although a lot of work has been done on immunity and catecholamines, but the tumor immunity field is still very new, and um, a lot of work has been, we and uh, Dr. Markov's group are pioneers in this field. We are doing this work for, um, we started doing this work, and there are now people are getting encouraged to come into this field gradually. So, uh, we did a lot of, we actually, what happened when we were doing this work, our focus suddenly, we got some interesting results on angiogenesis, so we gave more time to angiogenesis than on tumor immunity, but we are now doing it again, started doing it, and we got some very interesting results. So, uh, let's discuss something about the background. The sympathetic nerve supply, there is a sympathetic nerve supply to the immune organs. Dopamine receptors and uptake system are present in immune effector cells. And, uh, and beta, mainly the beta 2 adrenergic receptors are primarily present in the immune effector cells. So um, what happens is that uh, what we did a very elegant experiment. We depleted uh, the brain uh, dopamine by 6 hydroxy PTP treatment, and we saw that the tumor growth was more in uh, this tumor bearing animals with depleted central dopaminergic system. We found that the, the proliferation response of split lymphocytes to T cell mitosin, CONI, and PHA diminished significantly compared to control, and serum IgM and IgG levels and number of IgM secreting splenic lymphocytes also decreased significantly compared to normal controls in central dopamine depleted mice. The mechanism, we didn't have any mechanism then. We thought, our, uh, we thought that since dopamine cannot cross the blood-brain barrier, it's probably indirectly through regulating other hormones and cytokines in the brain. This was our theory. So what happened in, um, so Kobe Huygens group also did the same thing. They, they followed our work, and they also found similar thing, and they also couldn't give, they also didn't give any, any mechanism. 
So uh, we are working on this mechanism. Probably there is some interesting thing dopamine can do through acting through the central dopamine can do. And so we are trying to find out the mechanism, but uh, still we do not know any, uh, any definite mechanism. It can be saw some interesting thing. When dopamine was injected to the mice, uh, it was done by Dr. Das Gupta, and he found that when dopamine treatment stimulates chemoreceptor activity of peritoneal macrophages in the mice. And uh, we also found that dopamine stimulates the proliferation in tumor bearing mice. When you inject this mice with dopamine, and we, when we collected those T and B cells, and we found this interesting thing. But in contrast to this dopamine, again, when you activate beta 2 adrenergic receptors, people have shown that there is T cell, T cell activity goes down, and the tumoricidal activities of the macrophages also goes down. And you know, when immune there is immune suppression, it has a negative impact on the tumor growth. Uh, so this, by this, I'm going to end it. And uh, for acknowledgments, uh, Dr. Dasgupta from the National Cancer Institute, he has been my friend for many years. We are active collaborators. We did a lot of work together. We still do a lot of work together because when I entered that lab as a medical student, he was doing his graduate studies, and we became friends. And we are still continuing it. This friendship has uh, resulted in a lot of good work. And this is a, you know, a very good example that a physician collaborating with a basic scientist. And when a basic scientist collaborates with a physician, a lot of good things can happen. This is a wonderful example of this. And I'm also indebted to Dr. Dobrak. He invited me to Harvard Medical School. And he um, he's the discoverer of VEGF with Napoleon Ferrara. And probably they both will get Nobel Prize one day. And our, my team who did this particular work is Changrani, the Banyan. They are not junior faculty. They moved from with me from India to Mayo, Mayo to Harvard, and Harvard to uh, Ohio State. So we have a very good team. She did a lot of work, and Devanyan did also a lot of work. These two are very important person in my team. Without junior, you know, you cannot work. They are the pillars of strength in a team, and I am really indebted to my postdocs, my graduate students. They are the real workers. We just give them the plan, and they perform. And if they are, they are not there, you cannot do anything. So I'm really indebted to them. And Shomi Banerjee, he did some immune work. He is now he has left research. He is now a big politician in India. So he thought that politics is much better than research. So he he went into politics. And he's Uthiya Raichudri. He did also some work. And he's now at Mayo Clinic. Aung May Yu is my postdoc. He did some work. Shubham is my graduate student. Kailu is my MD PhD student, Tinglu is my MD PhD student, they all helped me in doing this work. This grant with this work was supported by uh, Government of India Department of Biotechnology Grant, CSIR Government of India Grant, National Institute of USA Grant, and Department of Defense USA Grant. We both we also have this active grant at present. We are doing this without their support also we couldn't do this work. And they are really we are grateful to the funding agencies for helping us. And thank you. And uh, this is the place where I'm at present. This is Ohio State. Winter is coming, so there are no leaves. We are waiting for a big, big, bad winter this year. A lot of snow. And thank you. Any questions?